Good morning, and welcome to Christ Church. I'm Tom Ballbach, your liturgist for today. Thank you for joining our worship service this morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Worthy of praise from every mouth, worthy of confession from every tongue. Worthy of worship from every creature is your glorious name, O Creator, Christ, and Spirit. For you created the world in your grace, and by your compassion you saved the world. To your majesty, O God, ten thousand times, ten thousand bow down and adore, singing and praising without ceasing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your praises. Hosanna in the highest. Now our hymn of adoration and praise will be number 651, God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens. Please join me in prayer. O oh God above, we gather in thanks, first of all, for our friends, for our family, for our church, for the abundance around us that you provide. And we ask your blessing for the tiniest wisdom to use these gifts to your service. With that in mind, hear us, O God, as we pray, as our Savior teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. The praise response is number 114, Thou Art Worthy. morning. Our theme for the day is the adoration of God, and our scriptures follow that theme. And so listen now from the prophet Isaiah as he describes a vision of encountering the God of peace in the throne room, being adored by the angels. Listen for God's still speaking word. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the God of peace sitting on a high and exalted throne, the edges of the divine robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around the God of peace. Each had six wings. With two they veiled their faces, with two their feet, and with two they flew about. They shouted to each other saying, Holy, holy, holy is the God of peace and of heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with God's glory. The doorframe shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. And also from the first letter of John in his first chapter, again, he praises the God of a God of light. Listen. For God's still speaking voice. This is the message that we have heard from the God of peace. And so we announce to you, God is light and there is no darkness in God at all. And so if we claim we have fellowship with the God of peace, but live in the darkness, we are lying and do not act truthfully. But we live in the light. But if we live in the light in the same way as God is in the light, we have fellowship with each other and the light of Jesus cleanses us from every sin. Friends, may we be blessed in hearing and understanding this God's holy word. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O oh God, you have more light and more truth ready to break forth from your word this morning, and we are ready to receive it. May the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And now, if you have children in your home, go grab them. I'm about to read a children's book called Every Which Way to Pray. Every Which Way to Pray by Joyce Meyer. Pictures by Mary Sullivan. It was a beautiful, sunshiny day, and the morning dew made every day zoo sparkle. As Haley and Harley Hippo scooted and skipped their way through the park, something in the distance caught Harley's eye. Look, the yellow hippo shouted excitedly. It's an angel. I don't think that's an angel, said Haley. Harley moved closer for a better look. It's a duck, he said with a pout. Suddenly a voice floated down from the rooftop. I'm a pelican, the bird said. Call me Pouch. I guess that's not heaven up there, is it? said Harley, disappointed. 
No, but the view is heavenly, Pouch chuckled. At least you're closer to God up there, Haley called out. We'll never get that close to God, grumbled Harley. Hippos can't fly or climb. We're stuck here on the ground. You don't have to be high in the sky to be close to God, Pouch squawked. That's what prayer is for. Haley and Harley looked surprised. They had always thought of prayer as hard work. At least that's what it said in Harley's book. There are a lot of rules for praying, Harley complained. You have to do it just right. Says who? asked Miss Bimble, who was on her way to the library. As everyone gathered around Harley's book, the little hippo pointed to a page that showed a family, dressed in their best, praying in church. Churches are wonderful places for praying, Miss Bimble said. But they're not the only place to pray, Pouch added. And you certainly don't have to dress up every time you want to talk to God. At least I don't, Miss Bimble giggled sheepishly. Me neither, Pouch grinned. Pouch and Miss Bimble explained that you can pray anywhere. On the train, at the library, underwater, and even at the ice cream shop. But please, cried Midge and Pidge, the worry warts who are out on their daily walk, if you talk to God and eat ice cream at the same time, be careful. Good heavens, yes, you could bite your tongue or accidentally stick ice cream in your ear. It could get very confusing, like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. Harley turned to the next page in the book. You read it, he said, handing the book to his sister. It has big words. Harley cleared her throat <clears throat> and read aloud. Kneel down with bowed heads and folded hands. Folded hands, declared Pidge. That could be a problem. And you don't have to kneel, honey pie, said Midge. There are plenty of other ways to pray, said Pidge. Bob and the gang like to pray upside down, Pouch chimed in. What else does the book say, asked Pidge. It says you should pray in a soft voice, Harley whispered otherwise known as your library voice, Miss Bimble nodded approvingly. Good for me, but not for some. Good for some, but not me, said Pouch, and he opened his beak as wide as he could and shouted, Praise God! God doesn't care if your prayers are loud! Pouch boomed. Or soft, Miss Bimble quickly interjected. You don't even need to make a sound when you pray. Haley continued reading. When you pray, try to use special holy words. Harley closed his eyes and began to pray. Almighty God of thy most holy bounty of uh, ho holiness, Harold, Howard be thy name. The word is hallowed, sweetie, Miss Bimble said, but you don't need to pray using fancy words. Pouch told the hippos to talk to God like a friend. Talk to him like you would to each other, he suggested. We can't do that, said Haley. Sometimes we talk about silly stuff. Well, that's okay, Pouch said. God wants to hear from you, and I'm pretty sure he likes to laugh too. But how do we know how long to talk to God, Harley asked. Talk as long as you want, Pouch replied. You can pray all day and night continually if you like, Miss Bimble explained. I can pray with just one word, said Pouch. Help! Suddenly, Sarge, the local police chief, ran up to see what all the commotion was about. You're in the red, he barked at the crab. Hit the road before I write you up. And then turning on to the others, Sarge said, So what's going on here? We're talking about prayer, sir, said Harley. We thought when you prayed, it had to be perfect. Nonsense, snapped Sarge. Prayer is simple. You talk, you listen, you praise, you thank, you ask advice, 
You stay in touch with your maker, period. Get it? Oh, and one more thing, Sarge answered. It's got to come from here, your heart. And then he turned to the group. Any questions? No, that sums it up very nicely, Miss Bimble said. Under Sarge's watchful eye, the group said their goodbyes, leaving the two little hippos with their new friend, Pouch. I'm glad we can pray any way we want, Harley said. Me too, agreed Haley. We can be loud or quiet. We can kneel or stand or dance. We can pray in the mud or in the tub. But be very careful, Midge crawled out across the park. Soap can be very slippery, added Pidge as they continued on their way. So what do we do with this? asked Harley, holding up the book. I don't think you'll need that anymore, the pelican replied. Haley and Harley thanked Pouch for all his help and then gave him a farewell hug. As Pouch flew back to his perch, Harley turned to his sister. You were wrong, he said. I know, Haley replied with a smile. He really is an angel. Now, I want you to know ahead of time that for today's, today's sermon, you're going to need a pen or a pencil and a sheet of paper. And so go ahead, go find something, grab something to write with and grab something to write on and we'll... I'll tell you what to write in just a couple of minutes. And as you do that, I want to ask you, who taught you to pray? Jesus' disciples came to him and asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And I don't think they were asking for a new prayer technique. I don't really even think they were looking for a prayer, a certain set of words that they could recite when they came together to worship every Sunday, although there's nothing wrong at all with our Lord's Prayer. What I think they wanted to know from Jesus was this. What does it look like to communicate with and to be in communion with God? What does love look like in that context? What does the experience of God feel like? How does it change us? How does it transform us? I think that's what the disciples really wanted to know. Teach us to pray. Now today I'm embarking on a sermon series about prayer that's going to last through July and, and also through August. And first I want to look at four aspects of prayer. And then we'll look in depth in the month of August at the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples that we pray each Sunday and that you might pray daily in your own personal prayer life. But as we go through this, I would ask that you keep in mind that this is not a technique or a, uh, a, a formula for prayer, and that prayer isn't a formula. Prayer isn't a particular set of words. Sometimes, in the most profound prayers, words are completely unnecessary and get in the way. And so that's not what prayer is. But perhaps you've heard of the ACTS of prayer, A-C-T-S. It's an acronym that stands for A for adoration, the adoration of God. C, confession, confession of our sins and shortcomings. T, thanksgiving for all that God provides for us. And S, supplication, which is probably the one word that we don't use on a daily basis, but it means to ask for God's blessings for ourselves and for others. And today I want to address the first of that, the A, the adoration and the ACTS aspect of prayer. And I think we all understand what adoration is. And I don't need to explain what it means when we say we adore someone or we adore this or adore that and the same meaning applies when we say we adore God in the context of prayer that is exactly what we do we adore God we acknowledge God's supreme worthiness of our adoration and of our praise we exalt 
we, ex- we esteem, we bless, we honor the God of peace for who God is. We reflect upon the character of God, God's holiness, God's goodness, God's love, God's mercy, God's grace, God's justice. And that's why it's a great place to start in our prayers with adoration. So let's do a little work on your prayer life. This is where you need your your pencils and your paper. And so get those ready. Because we're going to adore God this morning, but you're going to adore God in your own special way. And the first thing I want you to do is, is think about names for God. Names maybe you've heard before. Names of, of God that you would call before. Creator, Spirit, Healer, Guide. There's so many of them. Holy One, Divine Presence. So many more names for God. And I want you to write down, as we're going through this, I want you to write down five or six names for God. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and write down five or six names. What names would you use, or most meaningful to you, names of God? Now, just to lead us in on the creative side, look at your list of names. And I want you to look at the last three, not the first three, but the last three names that you wrote down and put a circle around those because we're going to zero in on those three names this morning. And we get a little creative with those last three names. So leave the first three behind, the first three that came to mind, and just look at the last three and circle them on the paper and And now that you've circled those three names for God now, I want you to add an adjective to each one of those names. So, for example, if you gave the name of God uh, as creator, uh, which is one of the common names for God, then you could add an adjective to describe what kind of creator God is. You could say loving creator, gracious creator, creator. you know, uh, along those lines. So, so take each one of those three names and add an adjective uh, to it. Now, for those on Zoom or YouTube as you're doing this, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to uh, go ahead and find the chat function on Zoom and YouTube and, and uh, enter those into the chat function and share your adjective name or name adjective of God, uh, one or all three of them, and, and let us know what you've come up with. And we might even discuss this uh, on our Zoom fellowship hour after the worship service. You see, once you have those, you're well on your way to a prayer of adoration. Three names with three adjectives. I encourage you to keep them beside your Bible or keep them in your, uh, where you pray daily or keep them by your bedside or post them on your bathroom mirror and use them to start off your prayers. You can even expand on them and explore uh, in your prayer life what those names mean and what those adjectives mean. What does it mean that God is a gracious creator? And you can explore that and, and explore why and how God fulfills that name as a prayer of adoration. The prophet Isaiah had a vision of the God of peace sitting on a throne, lifted up and exalted, surrounded by six-winged creatures, we would say angels. It was a vision of God's adoration. And the author of 1 John gives gives God praise too, saying, God is light, and there is no darkness in God whatsoever. Prayers of adoration open us up to new vistas, in experiencing the reality of the God of peace. As the author of Revelation wrote in the fourth chapter, 11th verse, you are worthy, O God of peace, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they continue to exist. This week in your prayers, as you go through your daily lives, focus on adoration, adore God, praise God for who God is. Use the names of God that you've created this morning and open yourself up to a fuller, richer, deeper experience 
of the heart of God. Will you pray with me? Holy Presence, God in community, creative spirit. We praise you for the goodness of who you are and for the blessings that you shower on us and all of creation every day, every hour, every minute. You are worthy to be praised. You alone, O oh God, are worthy of our praise. And we offer it in the name of Christ and in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in a moment of prayer. First, taking a deep breath to recognize God's presence within us. Let us pray. Oh God, you are holy. And deep within ourselves where our souls touch the ground and where our heart meets your heart, there we are on holy ground and your holiness surrounds us like smoke fills a room and calls out our own name your holiness is your goodness your generosity towards us and the silence which waits and hopes and is glad and even disappointed yet still waits you wait to meet us, to make us holy with your holiness, to make us loving with your love, to make us hopeful with your hope. In your presence we bow our heads, shameful where we have failed others, where we have failed ourselves, where we have failed you. Touch us now with the tenderness of forgiveness. In your holy presence, we breathe new life when we dare to be still and to be centered and to be whole and to be holy. Set us free to be holy. Set us free to be for ourselves a place where sacredness is joy and peace. And may we be a sacred space for others and make sacredness for them. 
dwell within us as is as in a holy temple that we may know your holiness and your stillness that we may sense the fragrance of your love and bring that fragrance to where life doesn't smell good but is a stench and putrid and stale within ourselves and within your world through jesus christ our lord we pray and in the power of the spirit in whom we place our hope amen God's love cannot be held back. It overflows again and again. God's love is a wellspring that gushes into eternal life. God's love is for you. You are God's child. Now go and live into the good news, knowing that God's love is overflowing in you, pouring out to others. Let God's love flow through you in dedicating your tithes, your offerings, and your lives. Please join with me in prayer. Spirit of life, you are the one who breathed over the face of the deep and brought forth life. You are the one who moved among the followers of Jesus and brought them into a new understanding. You are the one who is moving in us now. You call us together. You breathe new life in us. You are a wonder we cannot fathom, a mystery we do not understand. Yet, you have come into each of us, binding us together, moving us to love our siblings in the world and granting us gifts to do the work you have entrusted us with. May we trust in you more fully, understand your love more deeply, and grow in our relationship with you and with others. Spirit of life, move in us, guide us, and lead us on. Amen. Our hymn of commitment is number 625, Precious Name, O oh How Sweet.
as you leave our worship today, remember to adore God this week. Give God some praise and adoration from your very own heart. And now go out into the world in peace. Hold on to what is good and return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering. Honor every person you meet and honor every part of God's beautiful and wonderful creation. And now may the gracious God of our Lord Jesus Christ go with us to guide us with the light of the gospel and to gather us into God's righteous and beloved community now and forever. Amen.